Hello, Agnes Stewart students and families. This is Mr. Fuller again. Today, I wanted to share with you a video that described in a little bit more detail what our daily schedule will look like during the next few months during comprehensive distance learning. So hopefully today, you'll get a better understanding of what each day will look like and what you should expect on each of those days. So just a reminder that our students are divided up into two groups, the blue group and the gray group representing our Agnes Stewart uh, school colors. So the blue group will start every Monday on core day, and they'll have core days on Mondays and Thursdays, with applied learning days on Tuesdays and Fridays, with Wednesday being an independent work day where there are no assigned classes to attend. The gray group will have applied learning days on Mondays and Thursday, and their core days on Tuesdays and Fridays and again, having that Wednesday off. This schedule uh, really allows us to maintain this same schedule if we were to move into a hybrid model where we would have half of our students here in the school and half of them working virtually. So that was the purpose for that split and that divide um, to allow us to meet the numbers that we would need to um, for students in each classroom. So we're gonna look at the daily schedule. This is actually the seventh grade gray group schedule. I chose it because the numbers are not normal. And so I wanted to have an example of a schedule, unlike the last video that had period zero, uh, uh, periods one through six. This one has uh, some numbers that are a little bit more wonky. Um, so remember that our, our gray group has periods seven through 12 on their daily schedule, and then some kids that have additional periods that are included. So first off, if you take note on uh, both core days and applied learning days, every day starts with zero period advisory from nine o'clock to 9.20. So we at Agnes Stewart call our advisory our wolf dens, and really think of it as that idea of a wolf is only as strong as the pack and the pack is only as strong as each wolf. And so the purpose of these dens is really to bring folks together to connect and to support one another. So like I mentioned, advisory meets every school day. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's at 9 a.m. for every student, no matter what grade your student is in and whether they have a break right after advisory between classes or not, every student has advisory at nine o'clock on each of those days. Attendance will be taken for this class and uh, all Wolf Dens will do some of the same activities. So we have kind of a school-wide calendar of activities so that each student is doing similar activities during their Wolf Den on those days. The purpose of advisory and our Wolf Dens is that every student then has a point person that they can contact if they need assistance. So because they have advisory every single day, they have someone that they could touch base with every day. That's the same person um, that they could ask questions to or that they can get information from. It allows us to share some school-wide information as well as our morning announcements or school-wide announcements that need to be made. And part of the purpose of this will be to focus on social and emotional learning. And for that, we use the Second Step program, which many of our students that are coming into us from elementary school are also familiar with. We used this program last year in our Wolf Dens. Uh, the elementary school students also were using it. And so they are familiar with that. And it helps us uh, to help teach our students just some of the social skills and emotional skills that they need as they try to navigate the world, especially as middle school students. During this time, we'll also do some digital citizenship instruction, which allows us to talk with kids about uh, safe behaviors online and what proper etiquette is online and uh, how to behave themselves in a virtual environment, as well as uh, sometimes setting goals, uh, reflecting on grades, uh, setting goals for future progress and how they can continue to improve. So again, that's what our advisory looks like. And that is where every kid will start their school day at nine o'clock. So coming back to that, we're gonna then look at their core days. So that's this left side of the column here. In this example, it's periods seven through seven, eight and 11 and 12 on the seventh grade gray schedule. Um, so remember that for the blue group, they have their core days on Monday and Thursday and the gray group has their core days on Tuesdays and Fridays. These core days consist of four periods of instruction, including advisory, 
well, in, as well as advisory. So five periods on those days, but four periods of core instruction. Um, each one of those periods is a 55 minute class. And all of those periods start with live instruction, which allows us to take attendance, which will be taken each day, um, to check in with students on their progress and how things have gone since the last meeting, as well as to present new instruction. Because this is a long period of time and these core days will be the longer days for our students, uh, we are committed to including movement breaks, doing some more peer interaction, allowing for some breakout rooms for small group work so that students can interact more with each other and not just sit and listen to the teacher for 55 minutes. There'll also be some opportunities for guided independent work. This would be similar to students being in the classroom where a teacher would give an assignment and then give students some time to work on that assignment. Well, students could remain online during this time as they're working independently and the teacher will be able to provide some assistance as they work on that. So as well, uh, uh, in addition to the 55 minute class periods, there will also be some applied learning that is assigned um, and can be accomplished either on Wednesdays on the days that we don't have assigned class times or during applied learning times on the applied learning day when they do not have uh, their related arts class or other um, instructional periods. So those are the core days. So now let's look over here on the right side of this slide. And you can see here that the seventh grade has related arts in the middle of the day. If we were looking at a sixth grade schedule, they would have their related arts periods at the beginning of the day and an eighth grade schedule, oops, where the eighth graders have their class periods at the end of the day. So here we see that the seventh grade has theirs in the middle of the day, but there's also these kind of funky periods here that are 16, 17, and 18 periods. You see that they have an asterisk next to them, and that's because not all students have those periods um, or are assigned those periods. Those could be reading, math, or writing intervention classes. Um, so if a student needs some additional support, uh, might be a student on an IEP or with a 504 or that might need additional assistance in any of those core content areas. They might be assigned to an intervention or class. Um, you notice that it also says applied learning. So that would be some of those times where students could work on their homework. They could work on tasks that have been assigned um, and use that time wisely to continue their studies. On these applied learning days, the blue group uh, has those days on Tuesdays and Fridays. The gray group has these days on Monday and Thursday. Every student has at least two periods on these days in addition to their advisory, which is every day, once again. And those are their related arts classes. Every student will have each related arts class this year, which is a little bit different than it has been in the past. And that helps us to keep students in cohorts um, so that if we were to come back together, that we would be able to maintain those cohorts and have uh, fewer um, groups interacting with one another, which provides some challenges, but also this will be a benefit for us here this year. So we have these classes here that include art, STEM lab, Spanish, Fit for Life, which used to be called FACTS, or Family and Consumer Studies, uh, Music Appreciation class, and then PE and Health. Uh, one time with Mrs. Clark and one time with Mr. Z. So students will rotate through those classes this year and will be able to experience all of the related arts classes that our school has to offer, which is a pretty phenomenal experience. And we hope that it will be um, an opportunity for your kids to uh, maybe learn something new or try something that they haven't before. Um, some students, like I mentioned, will be assigned to intervention classes on these days. And those are the, are the classes that have kind of those wonky um, period numbers like 13 through 20. And so just pay attention to those schedules that we uh, went over yesterday in the video and uh, you'll know what time uh, those classes meet. Um, students should be using any unassigned times to work on their applied learning activities and the homework that's been assigned. Um, everyday options always include working on iReady once that, that is available, which is our online math support program that kind of meets students where they're at and helps them to continue to, to fill in some of the holes that, that there might be in their math in, in their math learning, um, as well as reading. So I would always encourage your students to be reading something 
And uh, the only way really to get better at reading is to actually read. So if you can uh, be of assistance in helping your students have something to read, we'll also be making our school library available here in the coming weeks and months. And so students can go online, check out a book from our library, and then you can come by the school here and pick it up, as well as our city library being a great resource for any uh, books that our kids might be interested in. So just a reminder that there is this day in the middle of the week that's on Wednesday that is really centered and saved for independent and applied learning. Um, there's a couple of reasons for these days. It provides us uh, with the opportunity to do some professional development and learning for our teachers as they're navigating all these new systems and learning new things. It allows for our teachers to collaborate together and to help to plan and share ideas that they have that are working for them. It also will help us if we move into a hybrid model to have a day where we can really deep clean the building and uh, spend a little bit more time on uh, sanitizing the areas where students and people have been. For students on these Wednesdays, students should be using this time to work on their homework and applied learning activities that have been assigned in all of their classes. And again, uh, if they don't have any or they say they don't have any, you can encourage them to do some of their iReady math work or to read or to do other uh, maybe learning activities that you might have at home or online. Also, every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, all of our staff have office hours between two and three o'clock in the afternoon. This is an enormous opportunity for students and parents to connect with teachers every day. If a student is struggling with any of their assignments or might have questions about how to do something, they can reach out to that teacher during these hours and they can be provided with some one-on-one -on -one tutoring with extra help or any assistance that they might need. They could ask any questions that they have and then also work together to solve problems. Like I said, that also applies to parents. If there's questions that you have or if you need to reach out to a staff member, you can do that during these times. And uh, later this week, we'll be showing you on our website where you can access uh, all of the teachers' emails as well as their phone numbers and extensions so that you can reach them directly. Staff would be available by phone or by a video chat, whatever, whichever works best for you. And again, this is a great opportunity that hopefully uh, you'll take advantage of to help solve any problems that might arise. Just wanted to give you a heads up that there'll be future videos that are coming here tomorrow and uh, before the end of this week. We are going to be going over how to access Google Classroom on your district device so that students know where they need to be on Monday morning and how they'll access those codes. Uh, we'll go over attendance and behavior expectations um, our comprehensive distance learning website is almost ready to be unveiled and many of you have kind of looked at that as you're looking at schedules and we'll continue to add to that website throughout this week so that it's ready to go for next. Um, we'll talk about the weekly calendar and grading and how that will work. Um, we'll talk about roles and responsibilities of students, parents, and teachers and how we can all work together to try to make this as successful as possible for all of our students, as well as have some videos that help to introduce you to some of our other office staff. A few things just to keep on your calendar. First off, we have our virtual open house that is next Tuesday, September 22nd. We'll be running three different sessions of those. Those are live sessions at 4.30, 5.30, and 6.30. You'll be receiving those links uh, early next week on Monday or Tuesday, right before the orientation. And that will allow you to meet your students' teachers and to hear from them more about how things will be going and uh, what supports that you can provide for your students. Also this uh, Friday, it's been moved to Friday because of the air quality, um, will be the device and supply pickup here at Agnes Stewart. So that's uh, on Friday at se September 18th here at Agnes Stewart from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you have not yet picked up your device and your supplies, please make sure that you come and do that on Friday so that you'll be ready to go on Monday. Um, I appreciate you listening to the video. Please, as always, let me know if you have additional questions or concerns. You can reach me here at the school at 541-988-2520 or at my email, jeff.fuller at springfield.k12.or.us. Thanks. <laughs>